morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we are going to be covering uh, dynamic CRM business rules. This is kind of a quick introduction, just to kind of get you used to the uh, uh, the concept. Uh, I didn't put a poll up, so in the uh, questions or in the chat, won't you tell me if, if you've ever done any work with uh, business rules? It'd be good to start off with. How about that? Okay, very good. Okay, so seems like a few of you have done some stuff. Okay, so my name is Mitch Milam. I'm a dynamic serum architect. You can reach me um, at uh, Mitch at xrmcoaches.com, uh, at my main blog, which is blogs.infinite-x.net, and of course on Twitter. So if you have any uh, follow-up questions from this, then please let me know. Um, this will be again put up on YouTube as soon as I get everything converted this afternoon, and um, you can reach that uh, from uh, my XRM Coaches blog. There's a page that has the playlist with all of my uh, recordings there. So if you miss anything, um, you can feel free to uh, watch recording uh, later today. I'll also be sending out an email with uh, some, some summary stuff here that we'll cover today. So if you got any questions, then please ask in the question box and let's get going. So this is part of my Teaching Tuesdays uh, uh, um, program. Um, this URL is not correct right now. It should be just Teaching Tuesday. Sorry about that. I always got to have it myself. Um, so basically, uh, if you go out to that URL uh, through the end of the month, you can actually vote on topics you'd like to hear or see. Um, so there's some out there already people have put in, myself included, and you can vote those up or you can add your own topics. Um, so we've got a couple coming up uh, here shortly. Um, also, you can go to maxroomcoaches.com and see the, the webinar list for um, uh, for upcoming webinars. Um, they're at the xroomcoaches.com slash webinars. So, hey, uh, let me know what you want to hear and see, and uh, we'll get that on the schedule. So today we're going to cover some business rule basics, uh, configuration, and then how we actually use these. And then at the end, hopefully we'll have some questions. And if anybody has any best practices to share from their personal experience, I'd love to hear those as well. So what is a business rule for? Well, it is a way to programmatically or non-programmatically create stuff. So that means that non-developers and administrators can actually create business rules within the CRM system without having to know JavaScript. So uh, even though we can do it without code, it's still useful for developers because you can do it through a user interface and um, th that's all well and good. So there are a few limitations we have to keep in mind. So depending how we configure it, and we'll talk about that here in, in a few slides, um, it only runs when the form loads or when the field values change. It does not run when the record is saved unless the scope is set to the entity level that I'll explain here in a minute, like I said. Business rules currently only work on fields. They don't work on tabs or sections. Um, they don't uh, fire the on change event should you change a field value uh, as you normally would type one out. Um, also, uh, if a business rule is referencing a field that is not on the form, it will not produce an error. It simply will just not run at all. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. Um, some of the kind of stranger ones here, if you happen to have a whole number field that has the um, format of time zone or duration or language on your form, uh, then you cannot use a rule editor to configure those fields because that's just not a supported. Those three are not supported types. Um, if we have a serum uh, for, for tablets in use, um, the business rules are, are considered metadata, and metadata is uh, downloaded any time that it knows it changes it, so it downloads and caches it, but that stuff is not available until you restart the app. So you have to close it uh, and then re reopen it, and your business rules will be applied at that point. Um, the lookup field has to be taken into consideration if you ever use the, that as a, as a basis for one of your rules. And what it does is it actually looks at the textual value for the, um, uh, for the lookup, not the ID. So it doesn't actually record the ID. It just records the textual value. Then it does a match against that. So if, it's, if you change it, if you change whatever you're looking for, it's going to uh, actually uh, cause the, the uh, rule to fail. So those are just some limitations to kind of keep in mind when you're working with this. So where would you find business rules? Well, we have three places. 
um, if we go in into uh, customization, so settings, customize the system, or customizations, customize the system, we can find it at the entity level. Uh, we have a business rules at the bottom of the list. This is the account, as you can see. We can also access the business rules from within a speci specific field, as you see on the upper right-hand corner. And then finally, if we are editing a form, we can actually click on the business rules button on the uh, ribbon bar and get to the rules for the um, for the entity. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner of uh, the bottom right hand image, uh, it will have a list of all of the business rules for that. So that's uh, the, the one sample they have there. Um, like many things within the Explorer uh, pane there uh, within the form editor, there's a new button at the bottom so you can always create your own from there so you don't have to go back to one of the other two things. So scope um, is one of the first things that you have to uh, set whenever you create a, a new business rule. So there's going to be uh, at least uh, three entries. There's entity, all form, and then a list of the forms that you have on your entity. So uh, I was on a custom um, entity here, so the information form was all I had available. So I can pick an individual form that I would like the rule to run against. Or I can pick all forms if you have a multiple form environment. Or you can have it run on the server, which is when you pick the entity. So when you select entity, it will work um, in the background um, uh, so that you don't have to have the, um, the form open. But it also works, works on the form itself. So when I, when I say you don't have to have the form open, if you have data coming in from an external source like through um, – to some kind of an update process like Scribe or an SSIS package or a custom uh, uh, custom application you've written, anytime that the uh, work the um, business rule is set to entity, it will actually run without any user inter intervention at all. So what it's going to do is really going to depend on how you define the rules, which we'll get into in a few minutes here. But that's one option there. So some of the things will happen in front of the user. Some can happen behind the scenes, depending on how, what you set your scope for. So what can we do with the business rule? Well, we've got a handful of things here. Um, we can uh, show an error message. We can set a field value. We can set business requirement level. We can set the visibility of a field. We can set the default value. And then finally, we can make the field read only or not. So these are the things that we have available to us right now. At this point in time, this is the entire list. We can't actually change any of this. Um, I know we've talked to them in the past about maybe opening this up to where we can create custom business rules, but that's just not uh, it's not, not available at this point in time. So right now, this is what we have available to us. So let's go through each of these. So when we start off a definition of a, um, a business rule, we need to know when to actually start the rule. And we can do a couple things. We can actually create... Um, a condition based off of a value of a field, or the uh, which is a, this is a literal value. So this one say the account field uh, is equal to a value of another field or a, a literal value. Sorry, and then we can also check to see if the uh, value is the value of another field. So those are our two options. After we create a um, a uh, condition here, we can add additional conditions that are either anded together. So um, say we're looking for uh, on the opportunity, if the opportunity is equal to 10 or the opportunity is equal to 15, then I want to do something. Or likewise, if uh, we're doing, say, the, uh, the city, if it's, um, I'm sorry, about, not city, but maybe a state, something we can do an and against, um, uh, which would basically be, so let's say we do a city of Dallas and, and a state of uh, Texas in our account um, of um uh, address uh, information. If we put those in there, we can actually do an and. And what that means is both conditions have to be met before it actually proceeds to the actual action step. So the if then else um, that we have here, we define the condition. Uh, we can have multiple conditions. We can have um, an else. So it means if the account is equal to a value that we specify, do one thing. Else or otherwise, do something else. So we can actually turn things on or turn things off based on, on what uh, we're doing. And that's kind of interesting uh, uh, point there. Anytime that you have one condition or one thing you're going to do, in many cases, you're going to have to have the reverse of that action. Say that we get to the point in here in a second where we're actually turning um, a uh, field value to, to required. Well, we have to have a stage where it's probably unrequired as well. 
So we, we set the required at one place and then we unset the required at another place depending on whatever the value is. So just keep that in mind when we, we go through this stuff. So actions are things that we can actually perform or a task that we can perform. Uh, the first one is we can show an error message. Now this is a field level error message. So um, with 2013 and above, um, we have the ability to display messages that are at the form level, which show at the top of the form, or at the field level, which show up. Usually it's a, a small uh, red circle with a white X inside of it. And then when you click on that, it'll pop up a little tool tip that shows you the error message. That's a field level thing, and that's what we can do here. So what this does is it will uh, show an error message saying that the name must be in this format, and it's a uh, customer dot uh, or dash date dot user dash user and it's going to be on the name field. So um, when this rule gets applied, it will actually put a little uh, red X beside the name field, and then when you hover over the, the red X, you'll actually see this error message. So set field value, we can do several things here. We can actually set the value to either a literal value or a formula that, that we'll talk about in a minute. We can set it to the value of a field, or we can actually uh, cl uh, clear it. Uh, now. Clear, uh, I don't know when that came about. Uh, when I was playing with my 2015 online system, non-update uh, one, or the non-the spring release, I did not see a clear, so I'm not sure where that shows up. That may be a spring release, or it may be I was just in the wrong field type, but I was looking at the same field here. So I'm not really sure where, the, where this one comes in. So if anybody has done this and knows, I would love to hear that, and we can share it with everybody. Our formulas um, are... Uh, pretty simple. It's uh, basically math operations. So we can add things, subtract things, divide things, and multiply things. And what we can do is actually create uh, a formula. So what I'm doing this one, I am actually, uh, you can't really see the percent kind of got wiped off there, but I am going to set the opportunity discount percent to be um, a formula based on the estimated revenue field divided by the actual revenue field. OK, so this is doing a math operation. So it will divide the uh, estimated revenue by the account, uh, the actual revenue, and then put the result of that into the prob uh, the opportunity to discount. Uh, this is probably not a real life example, but it was the first one that popped into my head. OK. Set business required. So um, this does exactly as it says. It's either required or not required. So again, if you have a field like that or a, a action like this that is a setter, you also need an unsetter so that you don't get into a, a position where you've only been able to turn it on and you can't turn it off. So always have that else out there. So when it's not one thing, it's another thing and the other thing turns it off. So one of our actions would be to turn the uh, business required on for the name. And then we have a secondary action in our else of our condition to turn it off. So don't forget that. Visibility. Um, again, this only works with fields. It does not work on tabs or section, and all it does is it shows and hides the field. Very simple. Default value. Now, um, I'm making a broad assumption about this specific thing, which will basically create a default value for a new operation. So uh, I, I didn't read up too much on this. I've never actually created this specific type of rule before. And what this will should do is if we create a new record, this is going to set the default field, uh, default field value to either uh, another field's value or to a static value. Okay. Lock or unlock. Um, this took me forever to figure out what they were talking about because there's actually a lock on the field uh, when you're doing uh, working in the field editor. Not the same lock. This is read only is what this means. So they're locking the entry of data on the form itself. So in other words, I would like to lock the field to keep people from uh, editing the uh, field value. OK, so that's what lock is. And again, it's a pair thing. So if you lock it at some point, you may need to unlock it. So. What are the advantages of this? Well, quite honestly, you don't need to know JavaScript. Um, they're fairly easy to create. They're just done through a user interface. Um, they can run at the server level or they can run at the client level, which uh, can be either the web client uh, within Outlook, of course, or on the mobile device clients that we have. So what are the dis disadvantages? 
Well, the biggest single one that I have actually run into is you don't know these things are there because um, I have actually never had a customer create business rules. Most of the time, what we're doing is JavaScript. So like I've got a new customer, so I'm picking up in the middle of a, um, a system that's been in operation, honestly, since uh, CRM 2011. So they had it for a while. And we we're working on a calculation, and the calculation is not behaving like it's supposed to. So the first thing I thought of is, well, do we have any plugins that are running? No, no plugins. Uh, any synchronous workflows? No, none of those either. And then finally, well, do we have any business rules? And so that was the thing. So you have to kind of go through this. This list here is, um, I think, pretty approximate to how things actually work through the system. Uh, so it executes JavaScript first, if you have the form open, of course. Uh, then your business rules, then any plugins, depending on how you're, how you're, what you're doing, then any synchronous workflows, then any asynchronous workflows. So this should be about it. So there's a Technic article here, and again, I'll email this to you um, so you don't have to write this down, or if you want to take a screenshot, you can do it as well. Um, but basically, uh, this has a lot of good information about everything we cover today uh, in a little bit more detail and shows you where you can get your information and stuff. But, uh, you know, business rules are really and truly kind of covering the top, say, 10% of what we would do with form customization. So, again, we can uh, put data into fields. We can show fields. We can hide fields. We can set the requirement level. We can set it read-only. That's really and truly a, a good chunk of what we do when we're working with um, uh, JavaScript to customize uh, fields and things like that. The uh, big kind of drawback that I see to this is we don't have the ability to, to do the same to, uh, say, uh, tabs and sections. If we had that, that would be wonderful because a lot of what we do, uh, at least what I do anyway, is I'm not really hiding uh, fields per se because uh, the new form engines uh, since 2013 leave giant holes in the, in the UI. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll hide an entire, entire section or an entire tab depending on what the, what the thing is. Um, uh, I'm not sure how, how you guys do your work, but uh, uh, in the contact and the account, there's a field called the relationship type. And um, the, the internal thing is called customer type code. Uh, so a lot of what we do with that is we will show and hide different parts of the form based on what the customer type is or the, the uh, relationship type. So for a customer or a client, we would show one set of information. For a vendor or a partner, we may show a different set of information. And that's no, nothing more than hiding sections and tabs. So you ha only have one record, but it's customized to show you what you're doing within that specific thing. So... Uh, that's still a JavaScript thing at this point in time. I'm sure they're going to enhance this to uh, give us more capabilities as, as things go along. Okay. So I know we have a couple questions here. Let me uh, try and get to them. So Carrie asks, when does displaying the field error message keep the form from being saved? You know, Carrie, I don't know about that. Um, that is a great question. I'm going to have to find that out. Does anybody else know? No. Okay. Yeah. Let me find that out, and I'll I'll put that in the um, in the notes uh, for the thing for the uh, uh, webinar today. But that's a great question. Um, I got a sneaky suspicion that it 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 will not, but I I don't know for sure. Okay. I'm sorry, David. Um, uh, her question was, does saving the field, the, does uh, displaying the field error message keep the form from being saved? Okay, and she has a number two. When should I use the business rule formula operator versus having a calculated field? Totally different thing right there, Carrie. Um, calculated fields are done at the system level. They're not done really at the uh the record level. So when you have a cust uh, a calculated field, it's going to go through all of the records and calculate them, or all the ones modified anyway. And whereas this, uh, the business rule is only going to work on one record at a time when it's modified. So the um, calculated and rollup fields are batch operations. They happen once every 24 hours, unless you manually click on the refresh button when you have the record open. Uh, business rules are going to only going to work when somebody's modified a record. Does that make sense? 
Okay. But that's a really good question. Quite honestly, um, if you, if you've done any calculated fields, the designer for the calculated field is exactly the same designer for, um, uh, business rules. So if it looks familiar, it's because, because they only created one to do everything with. Okay. But that's a good, that's a good question. Um, uh, I would, quite honestly, I would, uh, I would assume it kind of really depends on when you need that value calculated. So, so again, since a calculated or roll up field is going to only going to be done once every 24 hours, um, if you need the answer now, then maybe a business rule would, would work better. But uh, I have actually compared the two, but I got us, I was kind of under the impression that, um, uh, in addition to what the, the calculations that we kind of covered here, um, calculated fields also had much, uh, a much broader calculated, um, possibility. It's so like you can do differences in days and times and things like that. That's built in to calculated fields, but not to business rules. Like I was trying to create one that that's a business rule that said that put an error out if um, the uh, uh, estimated close date for an opportunity was uh, older than today. And there's no way to do that, uh, evidently. I, at least I couldn't figure one out. Anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. Well, besides that one uh, question from Carrie that I'll get everybody back to, I really appreciate your time today. And again, if you come up with anything else that you want to uh, have questions on this topic, just uh, drop me an email, Mitch at XRMCoaches.com. Or again, uh, go out to the uh, um, tinyurl.com slash Teaching Tuesday and um, uh, give me some other ideas uh, what we have coming up here. Um, I've got a... Um, uh, a couple more coming up at the end of uh, or in July time frame. It's uh, my uh, Becoming a, CRM, a Dynamic CRM Architect series. Uh, basically, that's just kind of a high-level introduction to uh, what people like me do for uh, uh, on a daily basis. So that's coming up. And then if you have anything else that you want to see, then uh, please uh, drop me a line or fill out the, uh, the, the voting process on the uh, Google Moderator. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the time.